Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over to Chico in California in America, which many of you might happen to know is home to Sierra Nevada Brewing Company, one of America's really pioneering craft breweries actually. And this is a beer that I'm really quite looking forward to. This is actually my first Californian Scotch Ale that I'm trying for you today. So this one is the Maple Scotch, it comes in at 7.3%, as you may have guessed it's a Scotch Ale and they've added some maple syrup to the brew. So it should be really nice. This one's actually rated a little bit lower than you would kind of come to expect from Sierra Nevada on rate beer. It's got 83 overall and I think it was 79 within the style when I checked out but we do know that Sierra Nevada produce some really good beers so you know not that bothered about this but as a Scot I always enjoy trying Scotch ales from beers from different countries across the world so really looking forward to this one and I hope you guys enjoy this review as well. But anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the taste just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews I've done from Sierra Nevada before I think there's about 10 or so of them now no doubt I will add more in the near future there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do subscribe to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city or state whatever it is you're interested in do check out the, my other beer reviews as well there's playlists of beers from different countries as well there is one for the American beers there there's some whiskey and sake reviews that you can check out as well and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review always interesting to hear from you guys and your support of the channel is hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about sierra nevada brewing company then so this company was founded back in 1979 in chico california when the founders ken grossman and paul camusi decided to expand their home brewing hobby into a fully fledged commercial brewery and like i said these guys are considered one of the pioneering craft breweries over in america california of course really is the home of craft beer. But Ken Grossman had actually learned to homebrew at a young age from a friend's father and in 1972 he went on a cycling trip with some friends in the northeastern part of California, stopping in Chico to actually visit some childhood friends who were enrolled at the California State University and it was during this visit that he really fell in love with the town and the culture so he decided to move there permanently. But in 1976 Ken opened a homebrew supply store called the Homebrew Shop and it was there that he and fellow homebrewer Paul Camusi got deeper into the art of craft brewing. So in 1979 the pair founded a small scale brewery taking the name from Ken Grossman's love of hiking in the nearby Sierra Nevada mountains and they actually created their first brewing equipment mainly out of recycled dairy gear and they actually made a lot of it themselves but they finally completed this small brewery in 1980. So in 1983 Sierra Nevada opened their portfolio with three beers. This was the Pale Ale, the Porter and the Stout and they also produced the 10% Bigfoot Ale which is considered by many as being one of the first examples of extreme brewing. That barley wine of course you saw me review a few months back but it is now a kind of cult classic of American craft beer but in 1984 they purchased a new 100 barrel copper kettle from Germany but they actually couldn't afford to install it for another three years and in 1987 they purchased the plot on 20th Street in Chico that would house this kettle and this location has been the home of the brewery ever since and it was in 1989 that they opened the doors to the on-site tap room there but the company actually produced their first wet hop harvest ale in 1993 and that same year they actually hit the mark of 100 100,000 barrels of beer brewed and the brewery further expanded in 1997 unveiling a new 200 barrel Hoopman brew house with the coppersmiths that produced the original 100 barrel kettle in Germany coming out of retirement to build this for them and Paul Camusi actually decided to retire in 1998 and sold his share in the business to Ken Grossman but they added a 350 seater auditorium to the brewery site in 2000 and one of the really cool things about Sierra Nevada actually is the science and their interest in science when it comes to the beer so they actually built a beer research lab to the exact scale dimensions of the main brew house in 2005 and this is kind of they really are one of the biggest outputs when it comes to beer research and things like that these days but in 2008 the brewery introduced an event called beer camp and this was where restaurants and bar owners and things like that could come to the brewery for a hands-on experience and this really has since become a regular event and you get a lot of beers produced under the beer camp name from Sierra Nevada these days but the company also celebrated their 30th anniversary in 2010 and since 20 
2010, they've also had a partnership with the Abbey of New Clairvaux in Northern California, and they've been producing Trappist-style beers there, although the Abbey isn't officially certified by the International Trappist Association yet, but they do now have a second brewery in Mills River, North Carolina, and also their Torpedo Room Tasting Room, which is in Berkeley in California. And interestingly, this brewery is one of the kind of greenest in the world, actually. They've been completely solar powered since 2007. They won the Green Business of the Year Award from the US Environmental Protection Agency in 2010, and apparently 99.5% of their solid waste is redirected from landfill. They use biodiesel in their delivery trucks, and they sell excess grain to the cattle farmers and things like this. But they've had the same brewer since 1983, the same head brewer, sorry, since 1983. This was when they were producing 25 to 30 barrels a week, which was about 13 to 1500 barrels per year. And now the production in this Californian site alone is 780,000 barrels of beer per year. And of course, they do have that second site over in Mills River in North Carolina as well. So a very big operation these days. One of the biggest craft breweries in the world, if I'm not mistaken, actually, but a very, very cool company who have been very environmentally friendly and very pioneering since their inception. So if you haven't tried some of the Sierra Nevada beers, I highly recommend that you do. The Pale Ale, of course, is a bit of a classic, and the Torpedo probably is one of my kind of go-to beers if I'm drinking beer. So, yeah, um, do check out some of the Sierra Nevada beers if you get the chance. Check out my other reviews in the description below, and you can, of course, have a look at the website these guys are a really quite prolific brewery these days but their core range includes the Pale Ale, the Porter, the Stout, Torpedo Extra IPA and also the Keller Weiss Hefeweizen and you do get the more limited re releases like this one every few months. So that's enough about the brewery just now, let's actually get on to the tasting of this beer itself. So as I said to you this one is a 7.3% Scotch Ale. I should point out as well when it comes to this beer review, a lot of Americans call Scotch ales wee heavies. I have never ever heard that term being used in Scotland. It seems to be a term that has actually been used since American companies started brewing that style of beer in America. Of course, the, the, name, the name system that we had in Scotland for these ales was the, was the shilling system. So you had 50, 60, 70, 80 and 90 shillings. And this referred to the kind of malt content and the alcohol content of the beers. And it was to do with the tax that was given to the beers uh, because of this content. And the one that is known as the Scotch Ale or Wee Heavy today is somewhere between the 80 and 90 shillings. So the more strong variants. And of course, that's what you get in America. And the big difference between the American ones and the kind of original Scottish Scotch ales is that they, the American ones tend to be a bit more sweeter in terms of caramel and fruit than the original Scottish ones are. The Scottish ones are a bit more roasted and kind of bready than the American variants are as well. But it's always interesting to try new ones from different countries. It says on the back here, Scotch ales are a wintertime staple known for their rich malty flavours. This robust beer combines that traditional sweet malt flavour with a hint of maple for an added layer of depth, making this intense beer the perfect thing for sipping near a warm winter hearth. It says on the top here, deep malt flavours get a boost of sweet complexity from the addition of pure maple for a rich, silky, massively malty cold weather beer. So yeah, it should be quite an interesting one. This I do wonder if they've used Canadian maple syrup in this one actually, that would be quite nice. But yeah, just to tell you the specs of this beer quickly, 7.3% Scotch Ale hop with Aurora and it has a malt base of two row pale, caramel, Munich and chocolate malts with maple syrup as well. And that's another thing I should point out as well. I'm not sure how common it is to actually add chocolate malts to a beer. In Scotland, of course, I'm not sure how widely produced the chocolate malts are. Our malts mainly are kind of breaded malts and smoked malts, peated malts and things like this. But there you can see the standard Sierra Nevada bottle cap on this one. And I'll just let you have a little quick look at the artwork of it as well before we open up. There you can see a nice kind of winter scene there. I think that's maybe bird boxes or and things that are on it there are mailboxes, but quite nicely presented. This is the kind of standard Sierra Nevada brewery art. So let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. Definitely looking forward to this one. So yeah. Nice smoky opening there as we open the beer up and we'll get it out and into the glass. So yeah, as I say, I really like trying Scotch ales from different parts of the world and it's quite cool to try my first one from California. From what I gather, I do need to try, I think it's, is it the old numbskull it's called? From, uh, or the wee heavy rather from Alesmith. I've heard that is a really good example of the style from America and of course from Michigan you do have the, the Founders beers, the Dirty Bastard and the Backwoods Bastard. I have tried those before and those were really quite nice but as I say very different from uh, the versions of the style that we would expect in Scotland. But as you can see this beer is actually poured, if I hold it up to the light here and I bring the light down and just let you see this, the beer's poured a really nice kind of coppery red mahogany. It looks a bit darker on the camera 
than it actually is. If I bring the light just down there, but it's got a really nice kind of coppery amber colour. There's a few little bits of sediment particle just floating around in this one. It's got a solid finger of a kind of creamy and slightly beige coloured head on it there. It is actually crystal clear, this beer, but I think just because of how the light is at night time here in Scotland, you just can't really see that in the video this one but the beer take my word for it is crystal clear there's a few big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass but quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head there but overall it does look really quite nice very impressive looking scotch ale this one so let's have a closer look at the aroma then before we get stuck in yeah it's actually quite mild on the nose this one in comparison to what i was expecting I've always found that with Sierra Nevada beers a little bit. They tend not to be too punchy in the nose, apart from the Torpedo, of course. That one is a beast. But they do tend to have more subtle noses, and they're big in the flavour. But with this one, you can detect the nice bready malts. This one actually does smell like a Scottish Scotch ale. I'll point that out right away. The American ones always smell distinctly kind of sugary and things like that. But this one is the first one from the States that I've found that is quite bready, actually. So, yeah, it's a kind of brown bready character that's coming out of this one the sort of cereally grains maybe slightly toasted you can detect a little bit of biscuit in there it's not a kind of dark rich caramel the kind of treacle molasses sort of thing that you normally get from the american versions of this beer but you can definitely smell some of the maple syrup in there it's definitely got that kind of biscuity maple syrup thing going on maple syrup of course is that it's very a very kind of distinctive brown sugar note but you can definitely pick that up in this beer but it doesn't smell too dark, it doesn't smell too roasted. There's a little bit of an earthy hop character coming out of this one, and you can get just a little bit of the red fruits in this one. To me, it comes across as quite figgy, and you can get some of the sharper sort of raisiny notes coming out of this one as well. But it does smell really quite nice, so just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma from this beer. It doesn't smell too boozy either, but then I guess it's 7.3%. When it comes to American Scotch ales, it is quite low when it comes to alcohol. Normally, these beers you get in the States, you know, they're way up 9, 10, 11, even 12% and things like that. So this one is a bit lighter. This is closer to the sort of ABV that you would actually get in Scotland. You don't get too many big 10 plus percent Scotch ales over here, in my experience. But this one, it smells really quite nice. It smells quite close, actually to what you would expect from a Scottish Scotch Ale. So let's get stuck into this one then. So this one is the Maple Scotch, a Scotch Ale with Maple Syrup from Sierra Nevada Brewing Company over in Chico in California, Slangia. That's quite nice actually. I do have to admit I like that. Just on the first taste of course, I can just say I like this beer already. The first thing I'll point out, it's not, it really is more close to a Scotch ale as we would expect it in Scotland, rather than one of the, the kind of American variants. So I, I have to admit, I do like the American versions of the beer with the big sugary caramel and red fruits and things, but it really isn't that close to what we'd normally expect from the beer style. This one is a lot closer to what you would actually kind of expect but that's the kind of case with a lot of American beer styles you know with the imperial stouts they take them and make them sweeter the same with the, the IPAs they take them and make them fruity they do the same with the scotch ales they take them and make them sweeter you know that's just how American craft brewing works but this one is closer to the Scottish version of this style but it's nicely done it certainly is that the bready character often in the American scotch ales is kind of forgotten about but it comes across really nicely in this beer so in the middle of your palate you can feel the nice bready malts coming out you know you've got that kind of almost brown bready character just blanket in the middle of your tongue there's a bit of sweeter kind of biscuity grainy character on top of that you can actually get a little bit of the chocolate out of this one and that's one of the things that for me in my experience I don't find that you get a lot of chocolate character from the, the Scottish Scotch ales it tends to be a bit more of a kind of dark toasted grainy character actually but you can definitely pick up the nice maple syrup character right in the middle of your tongue there's not too much in the way of a kind of strong caramel flavor from this beer it is like I say more biscuity and it's definitely more 
of that kind of uh, maple syrup flavour that's coming out of this one. It's really that this beer, rather than being very, very punchy, it's more about how the flavours blend together and it works very, very well actually. I do like this one. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again. The aftertaste of this beer is particularly nice. You've got that maple syrup flavour just lingering there along with some of the biscuity malts. It's that kind of two row. I always enjoy the two row pale malts from America because they've got a nice kind of slightly brown bready base but they've got that kind of biscuity and slightly caramelly sweetness and they do that very well on this one. You can detect a little bit of the heavier bready notes that you would get from the Munich malts as well and like I say the chocolate is just kind of subtle in this one. It's just sitting there right in the middle of the palate and that just adds a nice little bit of complexity to the beer. But it's really nice this. I certain, as I say this is really quite good. It's it's definitely leaning more towards the Scottish version of the Scotch Ales rather than the American version, right enough. And maybe in terms of rate beer, that's why it's rated a little bit lower because rate beer, of course, is kind of dominated by American by American beer fans. And in that case, this beer is more leaning towards our taste in Scotland than it is towards American palates, of course. But for me, it's certainly nice. In terms of the hoppy side of the beer, you've got a nice little bit of earthiness in the back corner of the palate. It's got a little bit of bitterness there, but as you come further forward, it just kind of smooths out. And as you go around the front curve of the palate, it's maybe even just a little tiny bit grassy, but mainly the hoppy side of the beer is smooth and earthy. And again, that's what you expect of this beer style. The hops are, should be very, very smooth, and it turns out that way with this one. but there's a nice little bit of red fruity character from this one. So if you just pay attention to that little kind of oily bubble that comes out behind the front curve of your tongue, that's where a lot of these red fruity esters will come out in this beer. So there's a little bit of a kind of candied red fruit thing. It always reminds me of these uh, these little heart-shaped sweets that you get in Haribo Star Mix. You can pick out a little bit of that red candied fruit ester, but other than that, it's got a little bit of figgy character but it's kind of raisins and sort of plums a little bit that are coming out for me from this beer and you know again that's exactly what you expect from the Scottish version of this beer style but yeah this is really nice I do like the added kind of complexity you have from that little bit of chocolate malt and you know in the aftertaste like I say it's the biscuit notes and the uh, the kind of sweet kind of that, that just almost honeycomb flavour that you get from the maple syrup in this one. I do really like how the, the aftertaste on this beer goes. The aftertaste is just really nice and it lingers there. A little bit of that earthy character from the hop is just lingering on the palate too but for me it's a really quite nice scotch ale. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again and in terms of this beer if you want something you actually almost could session one or two of these you know with a scotch ale normally they're, ve they're, they're really quite high in alcohol content the ones that craft beer drinkers tend to drink but this one's a little bit lighter almost in the same territory as some IPAs actually. You know, a lot of IPAs can be around the 7% mark. This one isn't too much more than that. You could drink one or two of these rather than just a kind of taste that rather than just treating it as a taster beer as you would with the like of Founders, you know, Backwoods Bastard or Dirty Bastard or something like that. This beer is a little bit more sessionable than that. But in terms of the mouthfeel of this one, I'd say this is mid-bodied, maybe on the lighter side of full-bodied actually. It's got quite smooth carbonation. It does have a kind of big oily mouthfeel to it, but at the same time it does have a little bit of wetness in the middle of the palate. The malt base is quite sweet. There's a little bit of a kind of toasted character to it as well, like I was saying. The hops are very, very smooth and there's a little bit of juicy fruit as well. But overall, it's a really quite nice beer. Like I said, it leans more towards the Scottish version of the Scotch Ale rather than the kind of New World American version. And maybe that's why it doesn't have quite the same rating as some of the other Sierra Nevada, Scot uh, other Sierra Nevada beers that you would normally find but for me as a Scot I really quite like it and I do like the added complexity that the, the maple syrup offers to this beer so if you want a Scotch ale that's a little bit lighter to drink and a little bit more easy to drink then this is one that you probably are going to enjoy so definitely check it out. As, as, an advice, as advice from a Scot if you want a kind of nice Scotch ale that's fairly easily available in America I guess this is one that you should check out so yeah um, as always thank you for watching my beer reviews I hope you've enjoyed it until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff. Do check out my social media as well. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section.
section below. Always interesting to hear from you guys that are watching the videos. Do tell me about some of the other more limited edition beers that you can get from Sierra Nevada because we do kind of come across quite random ones in Sweden and of course here in Scotland where I am just now. We do get quite a few of the the kind of more random Sierra Nevada beers over in Sweden where I spend most of my time but this one's really nice and I do recommend that you have a go at this for yourself so yeah thank you again for watching and I will catch you very soon the Maple Scotch from Sierra Nevada Brewing Company over in Chico in California really nice Scotch ale with some maple syrup added until the next time it's just now and I'll catch you guys very soon cheers <laughs>